TM. <laughs> kind of. Okay, let's get the game on. So I'm challenging Bjorn now, and we'll see. Okay, right. So here is uh, Bjorn, who I'm sure you know about Bjorn. Bjorn um, has uh, done. I've done lessons with Bjorn. They're on my YouTube channel. I'm trying to help Bjorn a little bit. Very talented player. And what I'm going to do here is play B3. Okay, just decided because I know uh, Bjorn plays the black line and. This is, I don't think Bjorn has done a lot of work on the opening. Boo. Oh, come on, Aldo. You can't boo me for that. You can't boo me. You always get interesting positions. This is a non, this is a non theoretical move. I've played this move myself. Um, the Larson Nimzo opening, I think it's called. And I think it's quite interesting. You put the bishop on b2. And the idea of this really is quite a psychological ploy. Now, when you know your opponent in chess and you know what openings they play, you've got to try and act against them. So this is what all top players do in tournaments. You, you know you know your opponent might favour a certain opening. And if you can get them out of their comfort zone as early as possible, then that's a good thing to do. And I probably know this opening better than Bjorn. So I'm hoping that will tell with that I know the ideas I should be playing. Maybe Bjorn doesn't know the ideas with the Nimzo so much. So it's kind of a psychologically good idea. The main idea is your bishop is very good. You get some very nice control of the dark squares. There are a number of setups that white can play. Normally you continue with e3. And then you have to decide. Sometimes the bishop can go here, especially if a knight comes to c6. And other ideas include going into a bird system with f4. Now, bishop to f5 is, is a very good way of playing. Uh, and, and Bjorn's playing quite cleverly because he's kind of playing like he was white. And he might be trying now to go for some... He plays the Jabava London system. So he might be going for the Jabava London system. Um, so I'm kind of thinking he might bring his knight out to this square. A very flexible move for me is e3. I don't commit yet. If he does bring the knight out, then this is a very nice pin in this position. And I now can choose between going to a reverse Dutch with f4, or I can even play g4. This is not so silly and put the bishop on g2. This is, I like putting my pawn on g4 in these positions because why not gain a useful tempo against that bishop there? Um, I can also slowly play for e4 d3 knight d2 and e4 so I, I, it's a very flexible position this and i'll probably wait and see what bjorn plays and i'll just I'll, I'll base my plan around what my opponent does can bjorn hear your analysis no he he said he said a minute ago he's turned it off and we've done this before a fair few times and bjorn i know does not cheat there's no reason for him to cheat hopefully he can learn something and he gets a chance to play grandmaster as well why, why why would he cheat there's absolutely no reason uh for bjorn to to cheat here so he's gone e6 which is a perfectly good move um the bishop can now move out and now i have to decide what to play so there's no real point in me putting the bishop here now because my opponent can play c6 and i just lose time with my bishop so my bishop is not coming to b5 it will only come there if the knight comes there. Because one thing you do when you put your bishop on b2, you've got to think about what squares you want to control. And the main two squares to control are these two blue squares here. And when the knight comes to c6, that knight controls these two squares. So if I'm following a, a, a normal strategy, by trying to exchange that knight off, I get more control of these two squares. But I have a couple of ways to play. Now, I could play with d3 and go for e4. I could play with g4, as I've said, quite interesting. I could play with g3 and go for g4 later on. But I I enjoy playing the Dutch. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play f4 here. I'm gonna play f4. I'm gonna go into an opening I play with black a lot with an extra tempo. And Bjorn has picked a London system set up here. So he's kind of playing the reverse London system. And I'm now just gonna try to put my knight behind the pawn. I think knights behind pawns seem to be better than knights in front of pawns. This is quite of a a new uh, a new thing I've sort of found, I, I guess, or, or, or considered. If you can put your knight behind a pawn, it's better than putting your knight in front of a pawn. But maybe that's not true. Maybe that is just I'm thinking about Fisher Random. It is a reverse Dutch, 
but I've got my bishop on this square. You don't normally get your bishop on this square. But yeah, it's reverse Dutch versus reverse London. And this is the thing with chess. I mean, I always say you should learn only a couple of openings first. And as you get better, you learn more and more openings. But stick with a couple of openings. And when you do get better, you can adapt openings. You can, you can change from one to the other in a game. And generally, most grandmasters, international masters will know the setups that come from most openings. But as a beginner or even up to IM strength, you don't need to do that. So Bjorn playing very sensibly, developing a piece. I'm obviously going to develop my knight. And you can see here, I have very good control of these two dark squares. The next thing I have to consider is where to put this bishop. Now, Bjorn's playing a London system. Now, I've always found in this kind of setup that the bishop can go to e2, there is nothing wrong with a bishop here, but also it can go to g2. So I have this set up, e2 is a little bit quicker, and then you have ideas of knight h4 trying to get rid of this one. But I'm gonna go for a bishop g2 setup. I find the bishop on g2 can be quite handy for later on. But in actual fact, I've just played this and I realize I may have made a little mistake uh i talk about this and it's one of those ones where i'm sort of commentating i play a bit too soon h5 is quite a scary move here with h4 coming and against h5 i want to go h3 luckily bjorn didn't think of this against h5 you want to go h3 and meet h4 with g4 but if i go h5 h3 my opponent could have gone knight e4 and attacked that pawn so that was maybe a little bit fortunate. Now, as he hasn't done it yet, I'm going to hope he doesn't do it now. But maybe it's not so bad now because I can quickly castle. And if he goes here, maybe I'll just take it and, and go for that. But h5, h4, whenever your opponent goes g3 or g6, this is certainly something you should, you should consider. Um, it's kind of like a Leningrad, but I play this setup as Black Aldo against the London system a lot. So I'm kind of playing it a tempo up and... I find that these bishops have a lot of sort of potential for later on. And I find this is quite an aggressive way of playing against the London system. There's a number of ways I play against London system. In my chessable course, the Dutch course, I actually recommend putting the bishop on d3, funnily enough. That's a very interesting way of playing. Um, but this, this way I find is one of the more interesting ways because you keep all the pieces on the board. And White's general aim is to... Oh, is to play not that move h3 g4 and try to attack on the king side or d3 and e4 but the most important thing in chess is of course to consider what your opponent's move was and what he's planning to do which is e5 now let's just see if he can play e5 because often there's tactical problems with the bishop so if he does play e5 i go pawn takes knight takes knight takes bishop takes Bishop takes, rook takes, and then if I go d4, he has bishop g4. d4, and it's quite complex, but I know this, from, I know this tactical pattern from other games. Tactics become easier the more you experience them. So I'm try, I want to stop him playing e5. So the idea, if he goes e5, I take everything off on that square. He plays rook takes, which defends his bishop, which my rook is attacking. I then want to go d4 to get rid of his rook, but he then has the intermezzo move, bishop here attacking my queen. So if I play h3 first, I have two ideas against e5. One of them is to take everything off and then play d4, attacking his rook. His rook, which is defending his bishop, would have to retreat and then I win the piece. So that's one way that stops e5. The other idea is the plan I mentioned before, is to play g4 and to advance on the king side and this so this is a multi-purpose move it's tactically strong but it's also positionally uh, quite strong now normally white wants to play h6 here i say white because this is what you do in the london system so back here but i'm hoping bjorn's lack of experience in this position will put him off playing this move and if he does play that move I have a target to attack later on. I can go g4, g5 and try to open things up. So he, okay, and I say that and he's, he's played it. He's played it straight away. Straight away, he's, he's gone. He's gone h6. So he obviously knows his stuff. Okay, so now I can continue with this g4 move. 
I can even go knight e5. Knight e5 is absolutely fine to block things up. Um, or I can go d3, and I like the move d3 because it gives my poss my opponent the possibility to blunder with d4 for the same tactical reasons. And I want to move this knight here, right? Now, I suppose I could also move it to c3 and then maybe here. But if I go knight c3, will he go e5? Well, if he goes e5... I think he can play that because my bishop's not controlling it. So I, I like putting my knight on d2 in these positions. Now, if he goes bishop c5, am I worried about that? I don't think so. Queen e1's a useful move. My queen wants to come over here anyway, and I defend e3. I mean, I know these positions very well. He hasn't played c6 yet. Is that natural? Well, it, I always think that black's best plan in these positions is c5, c4. This is the best plan because why put the pawn on c6 here? It doesn't help uh, him formulate a plan. The only thing it does help him do is this, but it's very hard for him to play this move. So I'm going to play this move d3 because I want to develop my last piece before I decide what I'm actually going to do. The other thing with putting the knight on d2, it doesn't block my bishop, right? If I put my knight on c3... It blocks my bishop. So I, I like putting my knight on d2. Hello, the Fuxier, who says uh, the natural square in these King's Indian attack-like positions. Well, it is It is actually quite like a King's Indian attack. It's well spotted by the Fuxier. So Bjorn's played the best move again. Now, I'm just making sure he can still not play this move. Let's think. If everything gets swapped off, I do have the move d4 winning a piece. So I don't see any reason to develop my last piece. And now I have ideas of either queen e2, queen e1, e4, e5, winning a piece. This is something else which can be good. These are my two pawn pushes, e4 and g4. Why play c6 when you play c5? Yes, c5, I mean, generally what black wants to do in these positions, you've always got to be aware not just of your own plans, which I'm pointing out. It's just as important to be aware of your opponent's plans. So many people think this. This is key. When you're playing chess... You've got to understand what your opponent wants to play and you've got to try to stop those moves. E5 is something he'd like to play, but tactically I don't think he can. The other move that changes the position drastically, so we have to be aware of it, is C4. He wants to do this to open up his bishop, but he can't do that now, I don't think, because I take here and then I take with a knight on C4. I don't really want to even take with a pawn twice, even if I win a pawn, because I left with these two pawns, which are generally... Uh, very very weak I'd probably go knight e5 here well the reason I haven't played that yet I can play at Aldo and knight to this square is not a bad move at all but I want to I want to keep it more flexible this move can come and it's not a bad move it might be one of the better moves but I like the idea of keeping the opportunity of putting my pawn on e5 so for example you know if I get one more move I might better you know either go queen here and then e4 or you know okay so out so um so now i can't put my knight here because bjorn's very cleverly controlling this square so what i can now try to do i feel i either i should be either aiming for one of these two moves now now that i've done more development so if i go g4 let's say bishop here i can then go g5 aggressive way to play but i fear i always think i like this e4 move i just have to be careful i don't get in trouble so I could, I can't go e4 now, tactically. I think it loses a pawn. And if I go queen here, my opponent will then play e5. So we have to just calculate this line again and see if he can play that. I don't want to allow, I don't want to swap off this pawn for this pawn. If you can remove both of those pawns from the board, black has a big advantage because I've got this problem on e3. This is the one thing you need to avoid in these Dutch positions. And again, this is experience. So I don't want to allow this move at any cost. I've got to stop this move somehow. So let's have a look. Queen e1. I like e1 because later on it can come over to these two squares and attack the king. But if I go queen e1, he'll play e5. Now we have to calculate. So if I take, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, Bishop takes, queen takes, and he defends the bishop. I don't like that for white. Now, if I go something like rook b1, how about that? e5 takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes. I take the bishop there. So rook b1 defends my bishop and, and creates some little tactical ideas. But it's a bit weird, rook b1. I don't really 
don't really think I want to play that. Okay, so queen here, e5. Now, if I go e4, he can take on f4, and his rook comes against my queen. This is why even when you play positional chess, tactics are so important. They're, they're what makes your positional ideas often work. So putting the queen here seems risky because it lines up against his rook. Now, I can also play knight to h4, then play e4. And I'm sort of thinking that solves a lot of my problems. Knight here, let's say he moves his bishop away, e4. And if he ever plays e5, the way that I like meeting this move often is by playing f4, f5. And that will shut his bishop out. Both of his bishops will be shut out. This one blocked by the pawn. This rook blocked by his pawn. This bishop on here is blocked by the pawn here. So this, to me, solves all my sort of problems. This is the move he clearly wants to play. I want to stop this move. So if he plays it now, I obviously win a piece. I'm now controlling this square more with my bishop. So this is one of the advantages of putting the bishop on g2 rather than on e2. I have better central control. So next move, I'm actually threatening to win a piece here by playing e4, attacking his bishop, e5. So he's got to come back. And now that I defend this pawn a little bit better, I can now play the move I want to play, which is e4. And if he ever plays c4, or can he play this move now? This is interesting because he's got queen b6 check. So maybe if he goes here, I take, and then he goes queen check. And he wins my bishop on b2. So maybe he should play this move. But actually, maybe not. Because if he goes here, I have bishop takes f6. Knight takes f6. And then I have e5. So this move, this is the move. Doesn't quite work. I don't think black should ever play d4 in these positions. The reason I say that, again, is from the experience I have playing these positions in the Dutch. A lifetime experience. And I feel that if black shuts it down here, he has no real breaks. The only break he has is c4, but then he's not controlling this square. And he's giving me all the initiative on the center and on the king side. So if he ever plays d4, well, for example, I can win a piece with e5 immediately. This is my main threat, which will win a piece. So this is a better move, I feel, because black wants to keep it open. Now, he might be, I mean, c4 would be a very good move here. If it works tactically, can he play this move c4? If he's seen this move and it works, fantastic play from Bjorn. Now, does it work? This is the move he wants to play to give himself some checks and to free up his position. And if knight takes, he takes here. I feel if he doesn't play c4 now, his position could be very bad because I've also got this square. My queen's coming to e2. I've got very nice positional play with these this pawn break and this pawn break. So c4, I need to calculate this move from my own point of view. This is the only move that I feel instinctively I should be worried about. So if he does play this, this is like very high standard move. It's a, I mean, move not being nasty, I expect an 1800 to play. Does that sound bad? I don't know. Maybe it does. I apologize if that's the case. It might not even be a good move, but it's the kind of move that scares me. So I need to calculate. So if he does play this move, okay, he wants to go c3. So if I go knight takes c4, let's say he goes bishop check to get his bishop out of trouble. Okay, so he hasn't played it. We'll have a look at that afterwards. I feel that this move is a bit too passive. And now I should be able to, I should have a nice advantage here. Now we'll have a look at that c4 move afterwards. It was just the only it might not work, but it was the only move that was that kept that you know I, I think he, he should have played. Um so in this position, is my opponent doing anything? If not, I might build up my position. Well, he's not going here now. Well, maybe he is still going here. So I'm just thinking, let's improve my queen, defend that pawn, because then if he goes c4, I've got knight takes. And this pawn is defended by my queen. My queen also controls this square and this square. I don't really want him going b5. So if my queen on e2, I can take that one. And this just seems to improve my position. He's not going here because my knight can take it. If he ever goes here, I go f5. So I want to see what his next move is and improve my position. Hello to Captain Bunratty and anyone else in the chat. I, have I recovered from the crypt? I have just about, Jerry. Uh, you were, sh uh, you were uh, missed in the crypt, but hopefully another time, mate. And I'm actually playing Bjorn here, 
who was also in the crypt. So we were both we were both crypting it. Um, uh, and yes, so we're just playing a long play game. And then hopefully we're going to show you, well, the progress that um, has been made um, by... Da, 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 da. Uh, uh, is it Thanksgiving Day today? It is, isn't it? Blooming heck, it is. Is it Thanksgiving Day? It is. Well, I don't think he can play C4 here, Aldo. Can, can I just go Knight take C4 now? What am I missing there? If he, because if uh, if he goes here, Knight takes here. At least I'm not dropping E4. The reason I put my Queen here is that he can't go Knight takes here because I take and I win a piece. So. I feel like I can just take that one with my knight, and I should be okay. Now, someone mentioned g5. Now, g5 may be possible. It's the kind of move that I think Bjorn could actually even play. Maybe it's a good move, but it looks so dangerous playing this move when I have this bishop cutting across his king. So it feels instinctively very risky. Uh, you go b5, then I go knight e5, though, don't I, Aldo, in that position. My knight comes to... My knight would come to this square. Or oh, careful where you move that knight. Okay, so Bjorn is aiming to play this move. But his knight is maybe not on the best square there. So I could now go drastic and play c4 to stop that. But I weaken these two squares a little bit. Not, not a major issue. And also one idea I can certainly think about playing is this move. But I don't really want his knight coming here. So c4 does a couple of things. But I guess he goes rook here. And then if I go e5, he has bishop d3. So, well, my time's a bit low. I'm going to play this move because I don't want him playing c4. His bishop now can never get into the game. And this also controls this square a bit. If he goes rook here, I can always go rook d1. Uh, it's not. It's certainly not the end of the world. And the thing is, the reason I like this kind of pawn position for me is, well, look, my bishop's very good. I'm still not. I still haven't really calculated the, the consequences of g5. I'm assuming I'm okay because I have pressure against this. But the reason I like white here is that you know I have all the pawn breaks. I have these three pawn breaks. Bjorn's again found the best move. Now what can we do here? Well, e5 does open up his bishop, so I'm not in a rush to let this bishop in the game. I, I don't think I want to do that. Rook d1 seems like a very sensible move. And his bishop is very bad, so I can just play positionally and play against that. Um, now, I'm also thinking about maybe trying to get my knight back around, or even bishop to this square. Because if I go bishop to this square, where does he put his queen? If he goes queen c6, I take and go e5, which should be very good for me. But let's just, let's just play this move. This is a very useful move to play. My rook's not doing anything there. Why not put it on an open file? Why not just defend my knight? And I can even, okay, so he's, he's moved his king. Now, why has he done that? You should always think, why has your opponent played a move? Because now g5 is, is even worse for him. So this move seems very slow for me. Now, I'm thinking about what pieces of mine I don't like. I'm just, I'm even thinking about moving my knight back to see, you know, this way, even. Because my knight seems to not be fantastic here. Um, I'm not thinking about my pawn pushes too much. I'll let Bjorn always worry about them. Um, but I'm kind of, this move, I suppose he can just go queen c8. It doesn't really benefit me. It's just a cheapo. If I move my knight back here, he moves his knight to h5. I don't really want his knight coming there. Um, this move is kind of positionally desirable, I think. Um, just, just trying to, I'm going to go here because the knight there didn't seem to have a great future. It's not really going anywhere unless I get it in there, but... If I ever move it to f3, I allow his knight to go here because my queen's not defending that square. So really what I'm trying to play at the moment, really what I'm trying to play at the moment, I'm trying to just, I'm trying to really be, stop Bjorn doing anything active. And yeah, I mean, I think g4 was wrong there, Aldo. I mean, for example, there might be some tactical idea, but what I'm really doing, he's played king h8. To me, that kind of tells me that Bjorn doesn't have a plan and he's actually making his position worse. He's put his knight on a bad square. Now he's moved his other knight to a bad square. Why not let your opponent hang yourself, improve your position, let them go worse? And now this knight can come back here. I don't want to allow him to do that because he doesn't have knight h5, which I was worried about. So my knight gets more centralized. And now I can certainly consider this move e4. Yes, it opens up his bishop. I've also got knight here. I don't know, g4 was all right, Aldo, but I, I don't think it was correct. I'm going to go here now and... 
out, you know, I'm just, and now my knight comes to where it wants to be. And all I'm doing here, guys, I'm improving my position. But look, Bjorn has made his position worse, I feel, because his pieces are all, all in the wrong squares. And King H8, when your opponent plays a move like that, you can see that he's kind of lost a little bit of track of what he's doing. So let him make his position be worse. I don't need to play anything like aggressive unless it's really good. Now my knight, you can see now has much better squares. Well on D2, it would have had E4 anyway, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna play E5. This way, okay, so Bjorn is stopping my knight coming here, but I can now, now G4 makes a lot more sense because it, it's, it's, you know, just a little bit desirable to do that. Um, I can also go knight e4. I guess Bjorn is going to go knight b8 because he needs to start swapping things off and try to get his knight into this square. That's what I would do. So am I doing anything with g4? Is it really helping me g4, g5? I don't think so. I can even just double up, but there's going to be many exchanges on the d file anyway. Bjorn's holding this position together. Let's, let's not, you know, there's no doubt about that. I like this move because I might have some tactic with knight d6 and open up my position, my bishop towards his king. Now I think he should go knight, knight b8. This knight is very bad. This knight is very bad. And he's played it. Very good move from Bjorn. He's found that very quickly. He needs to get his knight and try to come in here, even though I'm controlling that square very well. Now, what can I do? Well, um, this move I'm losing a pawn, I feel, unless I've got anything tactical. Rook takes, can I go queen e5 there? Knight here, bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes, queen e5, threatening the rook, threatening here. Knight here, bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes, queen here, looks like it's winning. So I maybe can play this move. If I can play this, it's obviously incredibly strong. You know, you've got to combine, you know, the thing is, tactics might well work for me because positionally, it seems like my position has been improving, improving. And the rule is, tactics normally only work from a position of strength and my position was strong so tactics should work kiwi chess thank you very much it's very kind of you um for the bits thank you is iron faith did iron faith also throw some bits in? if i don't see any subs um i apologize if i don't if i miss your donations um i i i apologize you know um it's i'm trying to you know trying to play as good games i can teach you guys something while we're doing it so thank you but I, a massive thank you to anyone who does uh, throw some bits or other things in uh okay yeah well tactics flow from superior position some guy yeah that's true so my bjorn has to get rid of this one now even here queen e5 seems to win immediately i can also go bishop takes g7 look at this bishop this bishop is a monster and you can see that Bjorn's just put his pieces on bad squares. So this is it. I've really allowed Bjorn to hang himself. Now, where does he put his queen? I have this square available now. My knight is coming in. This is horrible for Bjorn. This is horrible for Bjorn. This this one coming in. Um, click to show... Well, well uh, to... Uh, Moobot deleted Kiwi's chess messages. Well, I, I, I'm sorry about that. Oh, shouting. Was it shouting, Charlie? Okay, I don't know. Well... Uh, I, I, uh, I'm not in charge of Moobot. Moobot just does his thing. So Moobot is salty. I don't know. Don't just, you know, it's not necessarily me. Just just blame it on the Moobot. Blame it on the boogie. Anyway, also happy Thanksgiving Day to anyone. Okay, so now am I just winning? Does Queen E5 just win on the spot? I'm threatening this. I'm threatening this. Is it just winning? I might as well double check. Um, I might as well double check. There's no need to rush. By the way, Groove Reven, thank you for subscribing. I, I don't see why it's not winning. I threatened, mate. I threatened the rook, and I think uh, this is probably, probably the end. The end. Yeah, this is the end. My only friend. The end. Uh, I think Bjorn. I think Bjorn is busted here. Unfortunately. Uh, so the opening worked very well. Yeah, this is it. I mean, this is what I'm saying. When you're playing someone who's used to certain openings it's good to get them out of that position and uh you know this is where you know you should i always say this to people who try and learn stick with one opening stick with one opening you know if you stick with one opening you'll learn it very well but maybe beyond here his slight lack of knowledge maybe let him down because it did seem he played some very good moves maybe he missed the c4 opportunity 
um, which we we'll have a look at afterwards. I think I've explained most of the game. The only thing I really want to look at is whether Black should have played C4. So we'll have a look at that afterwards. And then we'll try to get Bjorn on very briefly for, for, for a quick chat. And we, we would like to also talk about this app uh, that maybe Bjorn has, uh, uh, well, been developing for Ginger GM. We can, we can maybe see if it works. It'd be quite embarrassing if it doesn't work, but uh, you know, um, if it doesn't work, then it's still in development. So, uh, okay. 2%. Oh, you, you reckon I got 98% accuracy out there? Well, I doubt it. I doubt it. Well, Bjorn, Bjorn can play on, but, uh, you know, he, he, he's, he's got to come on Bjorn. No, come on Bjorn. Don't play on too much. You, you don't, you don't need to play on Bjorn. Okay. Oh, he is playing on Bjorn. Have some bloody respect. You know I am. I'm a grandmaster. I'm a grandmaster. Okay. So let's just not blunder. It'd be embarrassing now if I blundered. I'm a whole rook up. Maybe, uh, maybe, um, maybe people. Okay, he heard me. Thank you, Bjorn. Thank you, Bjorn. Okay, so what we do? Unlucky there, Bjorn. Uh, you know, I got, I got a position I quite enjoy playing. I obviously understood the ideas a bit more than Bjorn. So what we're going to do now, we'll get Bjorn on very quickly in a second. We'll just have a look at what the computer said about that. And we'll just have a look at that one moment where I think Bjorn should have tried the C4 move. Maybe tactically it didn't work for him, but I think he had to play it to avoid a passively worse position. So, uh, so let's just get the computer evaluation up. And let me just reframe the board. I don't know why I'm putting these on. Why am I putting these on? Oh, because we might be getting Bjorn on in a second. Uh, okay, so have a guess. What accuracy do you think I was there? I think it might be higher than normal. Oh, Aldo. Aldo. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know, Aldo? And anyone else who, who got the accuracy level, well done. Uh, I'm just going to readjust this so you, you can... I'll, I'll make it full screen. You can, you can, you you don't have to see my face. This is the computer's assessment. Yeah, I mean, in actual fact, PJ Reed was even, e even closer with 98.2. Apparently, I only made one inaccuracy. Some call me... Komodo. Some call me the computer. Anyway, but the thing is, the thing is, I know this position very well, and this is what I talk about. When you know an opening very well, then uh, you're gonna, you're gonna. Do I get a medal? No, not really. Not really. Okay, so let's have a look. I want to see where my inaccuracy is. It, G3 is apparently best according to the computer. Okay. Now I think what Bjorn should have done here personally. So I think G3 might not be best because I think he can go H5. And this is quite scary. This is quite a scary line. I'd much rather have a pawn on D3 now because this is, this is I mean, don't forget about Harry. I don't know how you can forget about Harry, guys. Philosopher at large, thank you for the uh, subscription. And the point is, H5, look, he even says good. I want to go H3 because then when he goes H4, I can play G4. But the problem is, in this position... I haven't gone d3, so Bjorn can go knight e4, which is really annoying because I have no good way to defend g3. So this move h5 is a scary move. If I continue normally, then he has this dangerous sacrifice. And after knight takes, he can even play rook takes here. And this kind of this kind of stuff scares me because his queen is coming over here. Maybe I'm doing well here, but it still scares me. I mean, okay, let's, we don't always have to take... The computer's advice. I just know from experience this is kind of scary, scary stuff. But maybe I'm okay here because I can castle. Okay, let's go on with the game. Bjorn played all right. Um, and we had now these moves. Now, the point is he can't really go e5. The idea I was saying here is I can either go g4 or I think tactically what I was also planning to do, if you can remember my calculations, I played h3 to control g4. So I can play d4, no? Yes, this seems to be very good for me. The computer's now saying that black has to give up a piece, which is clearly just going to be good for me. As you can see, I've got a big advantage. So my, my thinking was working. But if I hadn't played h3 in that last line, let's say I've gone d3, then he might be able to play this. Because in that same variation, if I go d4 now, the point, the point is he might have this move, yeah? And this is why one reason I played h3. It's really, it was to help my position. 
but also to stop my opponent's main idea. And if you can stop your opponent's main idea in chess, you're halfway to winning. Okay, so now the game continued. H6, D3, okay, Knight D2. See, I don't always agree with the computer's moves here. Where was my inaccuracy? I'd be interested. This seemed good. Okay, this seemed good. It actually, okay, it actually says this is inaccurate, and it actually thinks I'm worse here, which I find really hard to believe, unless there's some tactic I've missed, like G5. Because uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm certainly should not be worse here. So he should have gone C4 now. Okay. So the computer actually has found it. It says that E4 was my only inaccuracy. And the only reason this move could be inaccurate is for some tactical reason like C4. So this does maybe just about work okay for him. And remember, I was scared of this move. So my instinct was right. And maybe I should have waited with this move then. Let's say I should just go Queen E2 first, yeah? Because if he goes E5, can I play this now? Well, then he goes E4. I didn't really want to allow this one. Look at this diagonal. So what do I do here? I want to kind of meet this move with F5. So maybe I'll go G4 here. Maybe G4 is best. Because then if he goes here, I can even go G5. Ah, oh, G5, and I win the piece. I see. I see. So Aldo's G4 move should have probably been played here because I'm threatening to win the piece. Okay. Now, the only other time in the game where I think... Uh, now, here, he played bishop e7. And after this move, I'm clearly doing very well. And as the computer has said, c4 is best. And I was a little bit worried about this one, you can see. And this is the only way that black can keep those opportunities alive. So that's why maybe my e4 was a little bit premature. Positionally, the right idea. But in this case, it's a little bit premature because of this c4 move. And had... Uh, uh, Bjorn played this, it would have been alright. And I think the rest of the game, really, Bjorn's really struggling here. This knight, very bad square for the knight. I'm always going to stop this idea. And now, um, this is very bad. Uh, okay, I think this is a good move still, no matter what the computer says. And you can see now that uh, Bjorn's position falls apart. Had Bjorn... Let's say in this position, Moot is, well, he's losing here as the computer obviously uh, indicates anyway. Okay, so I think quite an interesting game there. Um, I'll end it, I'm going to put this up on YouTube. So I'll end it there for people watching on YouTube. So thank you for those. Or, or maybe I won't end it. Well, actually, I will. We're end it. We're going to give you now an exclusive. We'll see if we can get Bjorn on very quickly. We're going to give you an exclusive. Now, this might not work properly. Do you like my new headband? It's pretty damn cool. This might not work properly, but we're going to try and just show you, maybe, we'll get Bjorn on this app that Bjorn's been making. I don't know if this is a good idea. We're going to let the cat out the bag. What do you reckon, Aldo? Should we let the world know what we've been creating uh, in, in, you know, someone might come along and copy our work? Oh, no. What do we reckon? Let's let the cat out of the bag. Who cares? Let's get, I'm going to see if we can get Bjorn on quickly. Let, let's give, I'm going to give Bjorn a quick ring. So let's give him, in, let's give him a quick ring. Let's get Bjorn on. Hopefully Bjorn is, is not crying too much there. So let's just get Bjorn on and, and we'll, we'll see. So come on Bjorn, where are you? Let's give Bjorn a quick bell on Skype and we'll just get him on. We'll just get Bjorn on. Da, da, da. Bjorn! Hey, hello Simon, how's it going? I'm okay mate, how are you doing? You alright after that thrashing I gave you? That was, uh, that was rough, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry mate, I'm only, only joking, only joking. So uh, yeah, I, I think you <coughs> just went a little bit passive there maybe. Um, I don't know if you just Yeah, watching... exactly, talk about the cramped position. It's like I was just trying to unravel the whole game basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> did, you see, did you see the analysis afterwards, that C4 move might have... Uh, I... Yeah, I, I never really considered C4, so I, I mean, I briefly looked at it to maybe two seconds, and then I don't, yeah. I don't see the point. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the good thing about these games is, and I think one one of the times, one of the reasons I became a strong player was when I was, you know, playing a lot of chess when I wasn't as strong. I'd always play in tournaments where the players were much better than me. Uh, and I would uh, thank you, Kiwi Chess, for subscribing. I, and I'd play open tournaments. So I'd go away for the weekend. My parents would drive me. 
and I I started to score half out of six, one out of six, huh. and yeah. I, and I'd be like, you know, and everyone be going, oh, this poor kid, he's getting battered everywhere. And then, yeah. I'd, and then I'd start to learn from the mistakes. So, for example, if you ever got that again, Bjorn, you might remember C4 as the main idea. So you'd learn yeah, something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so. One of the things I guess you, and it's, I mean, it's um, a great opportunity to be able to actually uh, get inside your head after the game and actually think what you're thinking. Um, I saw uh, briefly just um, some of your comments and, uh, yeah, they were a lot different, different than uh, what I was uh, thinking you were thinking. So <laughs> there was like one, at some point I thought I was like, ah, I'm actually unraveling now. And exactly at that point, <laughs> I don't see the, the point of your uh, of your night move. And, <laughs> and, and I mean, it's this kind of, it's a it's, yeah. um, funny situation because you kind of, I, I kind of feel like, okay, there's a tactic here. I can't see it. Maybe if I had uh, 10 minutes to spend, I would see it. Um, but I don't want to be uh, like just make another move just because I assume you have a tactic, right? Right, sure. So I'm feeling like, okay, I, I better just like play what I think is best, yeah. assume he's uh, <laughs> he yeah. blundered and get yeah. a form and, uh, yeah, I, I don't, uh, and I don't just lose and understand afterwards. Yeah, I, I don't think you should ever change your plan if you can't see what your opponent's trying to do. I don't think, you know, this is what a lot of, uh, I don't think you can say, oh, I, 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 there might be something here, but I don't know what it is, so I'm going to play super cautiously. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I, I think it's best to sort of uh, play as you would normally and then, you know, learn learn from it afterwards. And I mean, I think the one thing to take away, obviously, from the game is just in these kind of positions, you know, if you get this kind of position, that the whole idea of going C5, C4 is right. Black's main push, as well uh -huh. as E5. And it's so yeah, cool. if I was kind of trying to make work, but uh, it could never quite work. Yeah, no, it always seemed like you got there first, kind of uh, with your punters. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. I mean, this is it's not this is like what you do in the Dutch. This kind of setup uh, as well, you know, it's a reverse Dutch basically. But <laughs> I mean, as long as you remember, I mean, pawn breaks in any opening. It's so or pawn breaks you don't necessarily do in the opening. You, you always nearly do them in the middle game, but you should know with the openings you play, what pawn breaks are good and what are bad. Like, yeah, exactly. So I'm sure you know that in the, the normal Jabava London a bit now. Yeah, um, yeah. and, I, and I, yeah. I'm kind of uh, kind of aware of this now and trying to get it into my game and, and kind of um, spend more time thinking about this, kind of where are my pawn breaks. Yeah. Um, and I was doing that, but it's like, yeah. you know, that I mean, you're <laughs> obviously so much higher rated and yeah. you know this position so much better than me. I've That's never right. played anything like it. Yeah. And, and well, you this, just this... kind of feel like, especially yeah. in, a, in a 10 minute game, it's really hard to, yeah. Um, yeah, to find well, the right ones. I mean, this is the thing. This is why I, I tell anyone who they say, what, what's the most important thing when I'm trying to learn chess is I always say, just stick with the same openings. Don't keep changing openings because if you uh -huh. stick with the same openings, this is basically like a Dutch I've got here. You'll start to learn the middle game ideas, your opponent's right. ideas. Yeah. You, mm. you, you, I mean, it might be a bit tedious, but chess is hard work and you, you, you need to to understand a position. You need to play it lots and lots of times. It's like poker. I mean, I speaking to someone who was a professional poker player before uh, before the internet came along. And he was saying the reason mm -hmm. things are changed in poker so much and the standard is so much higher in his day, when he was professional, he could play something, let's say, like 100 hands a day sitting at the table. Right, but then yeah. the professionals nowadays can play like, I don't know, 1,000, 5,000 yeah. hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so their experience of the game is so... They get the experience that an old, older guy would get. They get it mm -hmm. in one day. The older guy would get it in a month. So mm -hmm. it's like the same yeah. with chess. If you, if, you, if you pick an opening, you play it, play it, play it, your experience mm -hmm. in it will become... So much greater so i think that's a good little tip you know um so yeah. that's the one piece of correct advice i can't follow says aldo well i mean you don't i mean it's it's a bit more boring than playing lots of different openings i agree but it, it's it's uh it's an idea you know so um anyway um someone did ask very briefly bjorn about your king h8 move so let's just go go to that position where bjorn played king h8 so so what what was the thinking behind this king h8 move Okay, so let's, let me just uh, find the. Okay, I here. see. I see. Uh, the, I, I see. Yeah. The, I, sorry, I've just seen that Giant's toe 
is asking to be uh, timed out in the chat there, but I've just no idea why someone would even say something like that. Would you ever consider painting your arse hair in green colour? I'm <laughs> mean, sorry. Anyway, so <laughs> just uh, that's definitely a timeout comment. Well, I'll let, I'll let it slide this time. But okay. Anyway, Bjorn. So why, why King H8? Uh, well, I was kind of wanting to play this um, Knight F D7 move uh, that I do uh, after King H8. But I was, for some reason, kind of worried about Queen G4. Okay. Um, but maybe, yeah. So I, I would say, if anything, uh, you know, you, you've, uh, always, you've always got to have a point behind a move. And this, I mean, every, you know, every other move had a point. Knight B6, probably not the best move, but at least your points to go C4, I guess. And I just think King H8 is the one move yeah. you play which doesn't really have a point because you can probably... You can probably go can here anyway. Take... Yeah, and if I, I go... can. I don't see how I, having. I don't, a... I, yeah, yeah, I don't. I'm it's kind yeah. of blindness, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, I forget that uh, <laughs> after moving the knight, the knight is not there, so I can just take your knight on h4. I actually think I just forget forget yeah. about that, uh, and then. Yeah, I mean here you. Probably yeah, have to I was play... then thinking, okay, so what if he does that? Well, then I can play rook g8. Right. That's, okay. So root g8. Yeah. So that was just yeah, yeah kind of a uh, little bit passive. A little bit passive. Yeah. This this move. But I mean, okay. It's it's uh, yeah. Maybe gone a bit. Maybe maybe not so great great position for. Uh, uh, no, for it all four. seems yeah. like uh, yeah. just crammed. <laughs> it's a bit cramped, and it's hard. It's hard for you to do anything here. This is the problem. Yeah, so yeah. This is why. I mean, Aldo said I should maybe go g4, but the whole point I made is. I'm really realizing you've got to really in chess realize what your opponent's trying to do and as soon as Bjorn plays this it's clear that any move Bjorn does might actually make his position worse so yeah. there's no real reason for me to play this I mean okay tactically it could fail but I mean I don't need to do this move I, I, I can play something a bit more you know from a pure chess sense of wait wait for a, maybe to make an error here Bjorn uh, just because yeah. it's a very tough position anyway you know it's mm -hmm. a very tough position